So sea level rise is, uh, is a product of both Antarctic melting, Greenland melting, glaciers melting, and the ocean heating up and expanding. Um, but the biggest uncertainty is what is going to happen to the Antarctic ice sheet. And it is already melting. It is melting and accelerating at an accelerating rate. And the science suggests the Antarctic ice sheet will be the biggest contributor to sea level rise by mid-century. So at the moment, if we take a conservative estimate, which is what came out in the latest IPCC report, um, and we don't manage to reduce our emissions, so we continue on the pathway we're on, if we do this, then we could get a metre to one and a half metres of sea level rise by the end of the century, by 2100. That will have really, really big implications for everyone who lives near the coast around the world. Now, in the Asia-Pacific region, there are a number of very large cities on the coast, in Thailand, in China, um, all around that region, that are very, very vulnerable and at risk from sea level rise. The latest numbers that have been calculated in the recent IPCC report is around 800 million people will experience high tide flooding by the end of the century. 800 million people will be getting wet feet, <laughs> wet feet from a high tide and a flood by the end of the century. A really disturbing number is Bangladesh. Bangladesh is a very low-lying country. It's only a metre or so above sea level. Um, by 2050, so this is just in the next 30 years, we will get 20 centimetres of sea level rise. 18 million Bangladeshis will be affected by that. 18 million. We can't change that. That's already going to happen. That's, that's in the system. Now, developed nations like the United States or European countries, they have more resources. They could perhaps build sea walls and defend themselves, but the Bangladeshis can't. So we saw that two million people migrating out of Syria caused quite a lot of problems in Europe. Imagine 18 million Bangladeshis needing a place to live. So one of the big impacts is going to be the effect on human population and migration. Some places are warming, like the Antarctic Pen Peninsula, which is just south of Chile. Other places are cooling, like, like in the Ross Sea. Overall, Antarctica is warming, but not much more than the global average. And there is still a lot of sea ice that surrounds Antarctica. Whereas in the Arctic, that sea ice, that frozen ocean, is disappearing. So one of the strange things that's happening with Antarctica is that warm, deep ocean water. So a lot of the heat from global warming has gone into the ocean. And a lot of it is around Antarctica and the Southern Ocean. So that warm, deep water, which is two degrees centigrade higher, is getting up and getting around the edge of the ice sheet and melting it. So while the surface is staying cold, this warm ocean water is getting in underneath the ice sheet and causing it to melt. So the Antarctic ice sheet is melting from the underneath, from below. And eventually the surface will warm and then it will really be, will be in trouble. And that, that, we're unsure when that will start. It may have already started because the last three or four years have seen a big decrease in sea ice around Antarctica. The question is, is that going to come back or is it going for good like the Arctic? So as soon as we get this amplified surface warming together with the, you know, the warming from underneath, we're in real trouble with Antarctica. That when it, that's when it takes off. It's 
So it looks like Antarctica has a tipping point, and it looks like, from the science, that that's about two degrees of global warming. And so with two degrees of global warming, we will m most likely lose the ice shelves around Antarctica, and once they go, the ice sheet flows very quickly into the ocean. If we can keep the ice shelves there, they provide the handbrake. They they stop the ice sheet from melting. So some of the some scientists think two degrees of global warming. If we go over that, that'll be game on. Antarctic ice sheet will not just melt for for the next ten years. It'll melt for the next hundred, two hundred, three hundred, one thousand years, and we can't change that. So what? we need to do to avoid that is keep global warming below two degrees by reducing our emissions. Each country has to reduce its emissions in line with the Paris Agreement. In reality, at the current rate of emissions, we will be at two degrees in 20 years. So it's a very, very big challenge. And we must keep trying to achieve this goal. We, we have to. There's a chance we won't make it. There's quite a good chance we won't make it. So at the same time, we have to then prepare for the consequences, for how much sea level rise we're going to get. And so while we continue to mitigate, we will have to adapt and protect ourselves and our people. Countries will need to protect their people. So the science is really important. It not only tells us what we need to do to mitigate, it tells us what we might have to prepare for.